What, what's up, guys? How you doing? All right. Uh, Rod, I need your camera on. Yeah, and I see that. There we go. And here comes Stu Sauce. Here comes Stu Sauce. Do -do -do -do. What's up, motherfuckers? Hey. What's up, Stu Sauce? Is it just the three of us again? No, sir. We got Cody on the line, too. Hey, we go. yeah. What's up, Cody? Hey, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> All's well, oh, man. Where's your picture? I don't see you, brother. You don't see me. Uh-oh. Oh, oh there you are. Okay. Oh, snap. Well, uh, to me, that means that this is the XY and sexy, and we are exotic. Hey, yo, you cosmic guys and cosmic gals out there. Ooh, yeah. All righty. Uh, today, I, I have to say, we are brought to you by our wonderful, wonderful sponsors. Uh, SEO gurus extraordinaire. Social ubiquity, baby. Uh. And uh, we bring in the gun, grunts. Oh, I almost said the guns, but we don't play with guns. No. Mm, well, some of us do. <laughs> but <laughs> on the flip side of that, mm, let me introduce these crazy motherfuckers if I haven't already. Oh, uh, we got Serum in the house. What's up? What's up? If I wave my arms, a magic lady appears. Oh, man. And another magic man with the crazy fingers because he fingers a bass like you would your friend, lady <laughs> friend, some of you your man friend, some of you your basses. Uh, give it up for our bass man, baby. Mm. <laughs> Those are his magic spirit fingers, and he will definitely elate your spirit, baby. <laughs> uh, and the doctor, baby, see orange up in the hazel, oh shizzle, give it up for this guy, baby. Mm. Welcome, welcome. Hey, everybody. Glad to be here. On this day especially, no? I know, I know that's right, hey. This is a special one. Yes, Who are we covering, Stu Sauce? Oh man, we are covering none other than the king of pop, baby. And I ain't talking about Prince because he's the prince of pop. We talking about the king, baby. No, not Elvis. No, we ain't talking James Brown again. No, we talking about MJ, not Michael Jordan. No, we talking Michael Jackson. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh, I'm excited. Uh, I'm off the wall, baby. Uh, this guy's going to be the thriller for Shilla. Uh. Mm, he gonna give you a chiller, baby. Make you all over, baby. <laughs> nice, nice, very nice. Thank you. It's all the coquito. That wow. <laughs> okay, no, that makes sense. That was my favorite intro to date. <laughs> Let me tell you, I had a lot of coquito. I had a feeling it was something else. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, it's definitely nothing else. It's definitely the coquito. Maybe the sugar? jacket. <laughs> down horrible if I see him very slow. <laughs> oh, man, Jack and Coquito, no. <laughs> That's a hell of a combonito. <laughs> Good one. Good one. Oh Good my one. god. <laughs> this uh, has gotten off man. to a very rocky start right away. <laughs> That's okay. That's hey, okay. you had Coquito at work. You know I did have Coquito at work last week. <laughs> Yeah, so what I'm sensing is Jealousy, which is a song by somebody else. But we'll get to them another date. Let's talk about this Michael Jackson mother jamma, bro. Oh, yeah. No, we had to get to a rocky start because he didn't have one. He had a rocky end, but, you know, we'll talk about the start in the middle. <laughs> oh, so dark. <laughs> <laughs> or light. Don't matter if right. you're black or you're white. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah, very nice. Yeah. And as much as I'd like to segue that into my song, today I'm picking Beat It. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro. Yeah, so should I kick off? Uh, should I jump yeah, into Wide Beat kick Off? It off. Ah, yeah, kick man. it off like that big leg kick that Michael Jackson kicks out. Oh, yeah. So I feel like we're all going to have some honorable mentions. And it was tough uh, to, to pick anything but something off of Thriller because Thriller was the one. Um, Rock with you is a hard one to pass up, but uh, yeah, man, the dance, the dance groove, the the disco, that like sound that I know is now Rogers, and then had to look back and say, wait, this is pre chic. Uh, but beat it, 
um, is another guitar legend song. I mean, Eddie Van Halen played the guitar solo on that. Um, there's some really cool stuff that they do with some drum production. I think I think the first hit is just the the acoustic snare, and then the second hit they double with uh, <coughs> bless you. They Thank double you. with a, a, a you know a digital snare like something off a drum machine or something, so it just pops. Oh, it's just it's, it's an amazing track, and it really kind of furthers that like horror movie vibe that Driller has. Dude, I want to talk about that honorable mention again, bro. I love, love, love the modulation in Rock With You. Oh, my God. Oh, Oh my God. I think it's a whole step modulation. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, he went from, like, one key, two half steps, because that's what equals a whole step. That's, like, from C to D. (laughs) That's a uh, a Michael thing. He does that uh, often, actually. He does like to change keys in his songs quite a bit. Um, so yeah. let, let's let's recap what uh, what you brought out here. So you brought "Beat It" is your is that's your my nomination. Yeah, nomination and "Rock With You" is your uh, honorable mention, right? Yes, yes. I think I think the the early Michael. Well, it's hard to say early Michael stuff because of the Jackson Five, but I guess. The early solo Michael stuff is just so dancey, but I, I I don't know. For me, when I'm taking trying to narrow down to the top song by Michael, for me it's got to come off Thriller because there's at least three or four songs on there that get in the top ten every time. I mean, that's that's pretty yeah. <laughs> that's yes. By that point, I, he's just so refined. We've talked about how Toto does the the, the music on that record. I don't know what their contributions to beat it was it doesn't sound like the riff is like van halen it sounds like just the solo is but i could be wrong comment keep me alive i know this is a song that lots of people know a lot it, it is just a solo actually it is just a solo they brought him in to just do the solo and uh uh he ripped it it was like uh you know really really cool um we have like a time limit on this podcast and it's kind of unfair to do that with MJ because oh. this could easily go an hour and a half. Like I can like fill an hour and a half on Thriller the album alone. Shall we, shall we do a sequel? Too. We should yeah. definitely do a sequel. Maybe we should like, instead of doing the a top whatever, you know, we just come back and discuss whole albums or something because um, as you know, I, I, I'm a fan of Michael in many capacities. I'm a fan of Michael as a musician. I'm a fan of Michael as a singer. I'm a fan of Michael's stuff as a producer, you know, and mm-hmm. an engineer. Um, you know, and it's not just Michael and the guys from Toto, which, you know, we divulged in our Toto podcast, but also Quincy Jones, who was a producer, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Bruce Wadeen, who was the engineer, and, yeah. uh, and Rod Temperton, who was uh, also a very know a white boy from england who wrote you know some of these songs it's actually really amazing i think so, um sorry to cut you off i think bruce might have just passed recently it's that possible that's possible wow yeah. i don't know about that yeah yeah i do want to I, I do i do want to mention that an honorable mention within an honorable mention first of all yeah. uh to eddie van halen you know r.i.p a god that we lost recently Mm -hmm. Um, And Bruce, I want to say that we lost Bruce very recently. I mean, within the last couple of weeks. We as if we know him, but I mean the music industry. Right, right, right. And then you mentioned another name, uh, Rod Temperton. Yes. uh, From from England, who played in the band Heat Wave. So, (laughs) yeah. So you start to notice the inner work, the intertwining of of a lot of our favorite artists and, you know, who they've worked with and branched out with, who some of us might know them, you know. Some of us. Yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. I just thought I'd mention. No, it. that's totally cool. Actually, you, you you had to because uh, the point was we can talk about this forever. So, right. um, great nominations. Uh, so beat it is your nomination, and your honorable yeah. mention is rock with you. Uh, it's impossible to make a top four for Michael Jackson. So uh, no, yeah. Cody, why don't you why don't you go next? Okay, uh, my nomination. I mean, don't stop till you get enough. You know. It's percussive. 
Yes. Uh, it's, it's, ah, it is that early version of Michael Jackson that you can't help but love, you know? Um, you know those little bottles chiming throughout the, the entire, the percussive riff? I yeah. think that's Sheila E playing those bottles, the glass bottles, you know, go listen to it if you want to. But I mean, it's just, it is the epitome of what Michael was. I'm talking about the glitter, the glam, everything. And that, that's the early stuff with Quincy Jones too. You know, yeah. which, and then we move into the eighties after that, but now I'm starting to sound like you. I could talk a full hour about this one song, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I know. Um, don't stop I to get, get enough. Is, is, yeah, yeah, you understand. Don't stop to get enough is my, my nomination. Um, you've seen Rush Hour too, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> the outro, <laughs> the, the karaoke <laughs> bar, you know, the karaoke the, scene. yeah, we, you've seen all of that, you know, it's Michael Jackson. I think that's one of those songs that you just can't help, but, but you, you're going to move when you hear that song, you know, and I think you can say that about a lot of Michael's music. So I'm going to stop right there. That is my nomination, my honorable mention, Human Nature. Ooh, Ooh, I, that yeah, we're gonna I we're gonna bring up this band's name. Phone. Yeah, we're gonna bring up this band's name one more time. Toto, uh, very literally quite instrumental in that track, but uh, a lot of the brain power that went into that track. Steve Bocaro, to uh, Toto's uh, one of Toto's original keyboard players, wrote the track. It's Jeff Bocaro on drums. That Steve Lukather playing that infamous guitar riff. Ding, ding, no, no, no. Ding, ding, no, no, no. You know. You got to forgive me, I'm a little bit stopped up, but you, you get what I'm trying to say, you know? Oh, yes. It's just one of those, again, another Michael song that you have to say, wow. 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 I, I always say that's the 80s ballad that every other 80s ballad wanted so badly to be. Yes. Because yes. it came out in 82, right? 82? And it set that, like, very chorusy, yeah. jangly kind of clean guitar, but through that chorus effect that became just used ad nauseum in the 80s. And yet, mm -hmm. you can listen to Human Nature. And even though you know it's an 80s song, it doesn't give you that feeling like, ugh, it's just another 80s song. Right. It's the one. Yes. Nice. Yeah. I really like your uh, the song you chose. That was one song that was uh, where I was drinking Coquitos earlier. Let me tell you what, that was a song that I eared out. Um, that <laughs> Right? Don't stop till you get enough. Oh, yeah. The, I those love are it, the dude. string parts. Yeah. That, yeah, the string. Dude. And, and yeah. I was trying to ear out the horn parts. I didn't get them yet. But oh, man, what a what a wicked line. Starts mm -hmm. on B and then crum like diatonically moves downward and then back upward. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> it's awesome. I'm nerding out. Um, my honorable mention straight up is going to be Thriller. I know it's very cliche. But what I do love about Thriller is all the interaction between a lot of these big names. I don't even remember the, the one guy who wrote the lyrics. Um, what's his name? Um, white British dude. Help me out. Temperton. Rod Temperton. Rod Temperton. Okay. So Rod Temperton writes this really wicked song, at least from the VH1 special thing I saw when I was a jit. He's like, yeah. And I said, jit. That's right. I'm from the 90s, people. I'm old. Kidding. <laughs> you don't look like this and be old, baby. Ah. <laughs> you look like that guy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, so, so Thriller, all right. So you got like, uh, like the glitz and the glam of the times, man. Let me say what. Uh, yeah, you got Michael Jackson when like, like everything was so legit to quit. I love it. I love it. This is the real deal. MJ, at least he's, this is the way I think of Michael Jackson. Well, there's so many versions of Michael Jackson I think of. But Thriller, uh, with Vincent Price, dude, at the end. Oh my gosh, <laughs> darkness falls across the land in the midnight hours. Stuck. Like, uh, oh man, I forget the lines. It's all the coquitos. Um, <laughs> huh. Awesome though. Like that voice, dude, it's so rich. It's just, it's the zeitgeist of its time. It, it really creates an essence of horror and I love it. It just encompasses it. And I'm not just saying that because Disco Zombies is my like response to it, but bro, it's epic, epic. Thank you for a great song, MJ. Um, and I, I, another honorable mention is uh, that Lion King song where Michael Jackson holds the baby out the window. Um, but that's the only other uh, honorable mention. <laughs> You're getting bad. I'm kicking you out. You don't get to tell us your best Michael. <laughs> no. <laughs> we all know it's going to be the most obscure choice anyway. 
<laughs> uh, all right, look, I already know I'm going to hell. I'll see everybody there. Thank you very much. Um, anyways, the song that I am choosing is Off the Wall. Again, I love this song. Off the Wall is like the epitome of me, like for dance music. I, I think like, like, oh, I love it. I love it. I'm drinking so much Coquitos, I can't even remember the, like, the song right now. I just remember how much I appreciate it. Awesome. <laughs> Y'all laughing like this isn't true. Yo, facts, dog. Facts. <laughs> nice. I I this is my turn now? Seltzer, man. I mean, it was your turn earlier. Where were you, dog, Mr. Excuses? That's going to take five hours and three Zoom meetings later. You're going to finish Michael Jackson? Wow. You're running your mouth, bro. I might, I might have to put you off the call. I know. Yeah. Right? You have to mute him. For yeah. once, we have to mute Stu. Imagine that. Yeah. All right. So let, let, me, let me go for this one then. So um, uh, Michael is impossible to choose stuff for. Um, and my honorable mention, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a, a little left, left turn here. I think we should not pick a winner because it's just not fair. Like, I agree, because I picked the rock song, so Stu's automatically going to throw that in the toilet. <laughs> no, I'm still well, going to pick rock song. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. But I think this one's an impossible to pick for. So uh, what, what's going to be my honorable mention is what probably is the uh, public consensus of Michael's best song, and that's Billie Jean. And um, <clears throat> the public yeah. consensus. Yes. Oh, Look at all these faces. Look at all these faces. And oh, yeah. lemon looking face. You know that a funk player is very funky when everybody's face looks like you just bit into a line. Now, have any of you listened to the demo of Billie Jean? Yes, sir. You know uh, what I'm talking about, right, Cody? Yes, the vocal I track. Do. Yes. So, so Michael is famously not really a musician. He can't really play anything. He sings really well. Yeah. And music channels through him. So the demo of Billie Jean is all his voice. And I think Janet's on it too, right? Hmm, I have heard it. Uh, so, yeah, I think she is on it, actually. I, I, I forget. She does one of the instruments for him. I don't know if it's the guitar or it's the... Or it's the boop, 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 boop. Probably one of the synth parts, yeah. Probably, probably yeah. something like that. But in any case, it's all voices and every element of the song is there it's all there he's beatboxing he's you know he's singing the, the the bass line everything is there so it's just he obviously brought it to quincy and to bruce and he said hey this do this make this happen so obviously and what i like about things like that is you see where it comes from you know what i'm saying you see the channeling of it it's mm -hmm. not it's not, it's, it's not Studio Magic. It's not Studio Magic. Even though I'm sure he had the best studio in the world and all that stuff, and Quincy Jones is a monster, and Bruce Houdini is a monster, and having Toto as your uh, studio band is monster, you know, and getting Addie Van Halen to just do a cameo, you know, and Vincent Price, and the, and the list goes on and on. Uh, all that is just there to serve what, Michael brought to the table and um and that's what's amazing about Thriller as an album and Billie Jean as a song uh, now my nomination my nomination my favorite uh, Michael song is Man in the Mirror from Bad um Man in the Mirror also has a modulation at the end also has a whole step uh moving up and um it's and it has this beautiful choir. I mean, I would say this is, other than the really weird songs that he did in, in on Invincible, um, like the Earth song or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, I actually like that album for what it's worth. I remember <laughs> buying that album. <laughs> I know, unpopular uh, assertion, uh, assertions, but, so, you know. After, anyway. So after you guys made, after the two of you made faces of me for saying what the public consensus was, you both admitted to buying and loving. Anyways. No, I had to make a face. No, that never. was not a negative face. I like, I was, the, I I like the face because it was a bass face. <laughs> Stu had a sour face. I had a so spicy face. So let me go back face. to my point here. <laughs> I will not be misclassified as someone who doesn't believe that Billie Jean is a consensus pick. 
And I second that notion. <laughs> just because he first did that notion. <laughs> so, uh, so Man in the Mirror is, I think, his most, um, I don't know, orchestral? I don't know if that's the right word, but it's big. It's big. There's, there's Michael. There's a whole choir. There's an orchestra. There's strings. There's everything. Everything's in there. And actually, that was the that was always my uh, mic test song. Whenever I bought a mic at Guitar Center or whatever, uh, I would use that song to test out the mic, to test out and and compare mics. So there's uh, a lot of reasons. And and all, and honestly, coming back to lyrics now, because I know you know a lot of people do care about the lyrics. The lyrics of those song of that song is amazing. It's really, truly really amazing about being very self-reflective. You know, looking at yourself and seeing what's at fault with you before you look at uh, for fault at other people, you know, and it's a great message, you know, which I think, especially in today's world, um, you know, all of us can really, truly take to heart. So um, um, that's my nomination, Man in the Mirror. Love it. It's kind of weird to do a Michael Jackson top however many and Billie Jean sitting outside of it, but that's where we are. <laughs> Well, that's why I had to, uh, you know, that's why I had to make it at my honorable mention because I mm -hmm. realized that it was going to go by the wayside and that was not right, you know, because, I mean, that's, that's what, that's the song that took Michael from being great because he was great already on Off the Wall. That was obvious, you know. Heck, he was great before that, you know. You know, he was already great, but Billie Jean... Uh, is what took Michael from being great to being stratospheric. Just, you know, another level that essentially has never been achieved by anyone since, you know. Um, I mean, and how much time do we have? Uh, doesn't uh, tell you until you're at your last eight minutes or oh, so. doesn't tell you until your last eight. So I, I might have also know. cheated slash broke it by having us log in and then log out and then log back in. Oh, I see. Well, I don't we'll know. What I don't want to take her too many chances, though. So I'll let no, you know. No, exactly. But you know, we we, we all just, we all you know brought out the songs we like, you know. So we I, I guess at this point we can really, you know, discuss the greatness of Michael himself, you know, because since we're not gonna try and pick uh, a top, but that's why I had to make Billie Jean uh, my honorable mention because it really was a big difference. The everything that around Billie Jean, the song itself is amazing. Um, the video of it is, you know, classic, uh, and his performance of it at Motown's 25th anniversary show, which, and that's where he debuted the moonwalk, you know, I mean, that's it's literally a moment in history. I mean, quite literally a moment in history. So, uh, the greatness cannot be denied, you know? Uh, maybe it's cheesy to like uh, Billie Jean because it's so so obvious or whatever, but uh, the you know the greatness can truly not be denied of a, of that song. I agree. I I think you stated that ever so correctly. <laughs> I mean, it's the number one. Everyone's gonna say, "Oh, Billie Jean," because of like you mentioned. I think the Motown Twenty Five. Uh, performance that's a performance that catapulted michael yeah you know he, he was known as the brother that left the jacksons and he became his own solo star you know with off the wall but then as soon as he stepped out with that glove that hat did he have a hat on motown 25 he had know. a hat and he tossed it that's right tossed you're it. right thank you thank you um that just elevated him even further you know um very quick story about that uh so Motown 25, that's all of Motown's past and current artists at that time. They, uh, you know, everybody was on that show. Commodores were on that show. I'll make it very, very short, okay? Uh, my dad, he's watching Michael. And if you know anything about the Commodores and the Jacksons, their history, the Commodores toured for the Jacksons when the Jacksons were kids in 1971 and 1972 before they were signed to my, Motown. And um, so, Commodores, all those years later, Motown 25, they're watching Michael and the Jacksons tear it up, you know. Michael does the moonwalk. Michael's just, he's the bigger star. He's larger than life. He comes down, 
and my father tells a story that he's at the in the dressing room and somebody puts his hands over his eyes and he's like there's a voice that asks him do you know who this is guess who and my father's like stevie is that you you know stevie wonders blind you know stevie is that you like, no it's not stevie the person took their hands over from over their eyes and my father turned around and he said it was michael jackson and he was like Oh, Mike, you were just incredible. You and to see you and your brothers, it was like when you guys were kids. I need your autograph. That was a running joke they had. I need your autograph. And Mike was like, no, you're, you're the bigger star. You know, I need your autograph. He's like, no, Mike, I really need your autograph. And Michael Jackson, I promise to God, took off the glove from his hand that he performed with and debuted the moonwalk in and gave it to my father. No. <laughs> oh. yes. Why yeah. am I just hearing this now? No, we're all just yeah. hearing this now. Well, listen, my father held on to the glove until Michael passed. And um, I don't know. You, you kind of have to think about when you know somebody and you know what they've been through and, and you look at the part of what made them who they are. It was literally a tethered up golf glove with hand sewn crystals on the back of it. That thing was raggedy as all hell. How do I know? I've touched it. I've smelt it. I wanted to lick it, but I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but listen, you have to understand something. You grew up in that, that thing. I thought it was like my uncle's glove, you know, like one of my uncle's work gloves. My dad just found lying around at the house or something. So yeah, that's Michael Jackson's glove. I'm like, hey, that ain't Michael Jackson's glove. And it, it, of course, after he passed away, like I said, my father, he ended up selling it uh, or auctioning it. He sold it to an auctioning, uh, an auctioneer. And I forgot how much that glove went for, but every once in a while, I'll look at that glove online and just, you know, really examine it. Cause I'm like, wow, you know, that was a part of somebody's history that I knew nothing about except for his music. You know, I think I'm rambling now, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. Michael was the, yeah, I mean, thank you. <laughs> Michael, was the epitome, Michael was the epitome of everything, you know, of sing song, of dance, of choreographing and just producing and being the creator that he was, you know? I wouldn't have been surprised if he jumped into acting. I'm not talking about that Men in Black movie. I'm not even talking about The Wiz. I'm talking about if he really jumped into acting and not starring in his own music videos that we call short films. But, you know, I really think he would have taken the world by, oh, a storm over and over and over and over again. I mean, I'm sure you guys saw This Is It. That was like an This Is It is a gift. This Is It, it is, is a gift. It's a it gift. Is. Because yeah. we normally we would never get to see that, ever. Right. That's right. You know, normally yeah. what we get is that This Is It tour video after it's done. Right. And it's all like perfect, you know. Yeah. And it's all exactly how it's supposed to be. Yeah. And this Is It gave us a gift of seeing how it's made. And... And as great as Michael already was, mm -hmm. seeing all like the work he put into it and and how perfect he wanted it to be because he everything was, you know, like just everything was perfect. Yeah. You see the work that goes into it and you just appreciate the greatness all that much more. All that right. much more, you know. Right. As a fan. You yes. appreciate it in one aspect. As a musician, it's a completely different story. Yes. You know, as a performer, you're, you know, you're different than the average person. Oh, Michael Jackson, the musician. I'm talking about top tier guys, you know, and girls. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think the world would have ever been the same if we would have had a chance to experience 50 nights, let alone one night of a sold out yeah. show in London, you know, which unfortunately we didn't, we never really got the chance to, to ever experience that, none of us. But um, I think it's just a true testament to the kind of performer, the person, the musician, the artist that he was, you know, I say musician, cause even if he couldn't play an instrument, he could tell you what he wanted. Y'all saw the movie. Oh, definitely. But, yeah. You know, what did he say? In, it needs more booty to it, you know? <laughs> yeah. That guy was great, you know, so I'm done. Wow. Who was that guy? Who was the uh, musical director? I forget his name. Uh, that was Michael Bearden. Okay. Uh, Michael Bearden does the award shows, Grammys. He's done J-Lo. I mean, 
Michael had the top, 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 top of the yeah. top industry giants. Bashiri Johnson, the percussionist. Ori Anthony, you guys know. Yes. His lead guitarist. Tommy Organ, who then went to play for the George Lopez show. Alex Al, the bass player extraordinaire, you know. <sighs> to my point, Michael as an artist, his music, his character, what he was about and who he was was introduced to a whole new generation. Those kids that were dancing on that stage 11 and a half years ago for This Is It, those are kids like our ages, you know, younger. I'm yeah. talking about fresh out of high school, wanting to live that dream. And I don't know, I'm done. So <laughs> it's great. We could talk about this all night. So, man, yeah. I want to do a whole podcast on Oriente. Sheesh. Yeah. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> so we we got so we got little time left. So let's let's actually because obviously we're gonna have to do more. This is not not gonna do it justice. So yeah. Let's discuss a different podcast we can do. So we can do like we can do one for thriller. Mm -hmm. We can do one for off the wall. Mm -hmm. We can definitely do one for bad. Yeah. I think the remaining ones can be done together. Probably, you know. I think you're yeah. making excuses to not pick a top four. I bet we could do it with like the, the five minutes we probably got left. We should give it a go. We're no, so to yours, yours is going to come last anyways. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we're saving you that uh, heartbreak. <laughs> you know what? Too many coquitos. No heart. I'm fine. <laughs> no brain, no headache. We'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to have much heart left with all that sugar. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm sure I'll feel it tomorrow. They'll pumping out my chest before I get that coffee bump bump in the night, bump bump in the day. Be doing the hump to bump, but that's a conversation for another day. What? <laughs> so tell us, dude, which which uh, which topic, which MJ topic would you like to do a podcast on next? I, I would like to, I guess, the one where he's Rafiki. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, I like Michael Jackson. I like him as a dancer. Um, I like I like what he does as a as an entertainer personally. Um, I like his music. I love everything about what he does. But I, I, his performance aspect is like second to none, man. Like straight up. Like I, I remember dancing around like from the ages of eleven to like thirteen or fourteen. I went to like a dance camp because I was so into what Michael was doing, and I picked up like hip hop and break dancing and a lot of different things because of of how he was as a performer. In fact, I try to incorporate as much dancing as I can because of him, more than Prince, more than, um, oh man, James Brown, because I mean, Michael Jackson was the, the first one I saw doing all this stuff before I even knew who James Brown was. Before I was really into Prince, Michael Jackson was, he was the guy, man. I remember watching Ghost. Ghost was so cool, man, because uh, that was where I got to see the making of all these wicked dance moves and everything. I think VH1 even put up, like, making of Ghost, and we got to see how everything was put together, how the set was done, the wardrobe, but those dance moves, his choreography. There must have been many choreographers on that because, I mean, Michael's great, but everybody learns from somewhere. I know he was very inspired by Bob Fosse. For those who don't know Bob Fosse, he was the one who choreographed the music for Chorus Line. A Chorus Line was like Marvin Hamlish, who did one, who was the reason why when I meet um, other performers, I just treat them like normal people because Marvin Hamlish was uh, a see you next Tuesday kind of guy. For those who don't know how to spell good, um, other than that, dude, hey, someone knows how to spell. He's nodding his head like, I know you just didn't say that, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I did. Uh, we only have so many minutes left, and that's cool. Oh, no, I was making a see you next Thursday sign. Oh, you don't have to spell it out for people. They can spell. How many, how many of you have seen Captain EO? I've seen Captain Kirk. You guys don't even know Captain EO. Captain EO used to be a ride at Disney World. Uh -oh. And uh, it was kind of like a 3D ride, and the star was Michael Jackson. He was Captain EO. Oh wow! Yes. Okay. So I know I know I'm really aging myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> you just dated yourself. It's okay. <laughs> That's just okay. Myself. You've got a low you, definition you want... camera. <laughs> what was before Common Era like, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to really <laughs> date myself? Listen to this. I remember when uh, those red leather jackets were like uh, a thing. Like I was a little kid, but I remember where you can go to any store and they'd all have these red leather jackets that he wore on Thriller hanging. 
and, and then love, five, too. ten years later, they became Billy Idol's pants. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have Thriller and uh, Rebel Yell next to each other on my wall in my bedroom. Nice. <laughs> Icons. Um, I, I definitely want to do a podcast just on trying to rank his vocal performances because the way that Stu loves him as a performer, man, I look up to Michael as a vocalist. Oh, uh, so good. I think that's a good one. I think that's a very good one. Cause I, I think that's a, <clears throat> a more fair comparison because you're yeah. just ranking Michael against himself really, you know? Yeah rather than trying to pick what song, you know, he, he did best. Um, too many, too many uh, uh, variables in that. If, it's, if you're just looking at vocal performance, you know, a song like Beat It might not make it because that was about the ensemble. A song like Human Nature might be hard to beat, you know what I mean? Because he does all those like little things. Like, ah. Oh, yeah. Hey, do, do it again. Do it again. Oh, I'll butcher it. <laughs> we'll sample that. We'll sample that, and that'll uh, be the intro to our next album. Uh, all we'll say is like he was mimicking that Free Willy character on that same like album Michael Jackson wrote all that music for. The Free Willy soundtrack, because he did that yeah, too. Yeah, Free Willy soundtrack. You were Free Willy a second ago, right? That's what you were doing. I was doing exactly oh. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was, I was double checking. <laughs> all right, we're at um, our last minute, guys. So let's do this. Um. If everybody really enjoys Michael Jackson, you want another one of these, let us know by commenting. Definitely let us know by tagging us on Instagram and be like, yo, you guys didn't mention this song by Michael Jackson I like, and we will on the next one because we are exotic. Yayo, I'm Stu Sauce, that's C. Rome, everybody. That's Bass Rider, Rob the Bass Rider. We got the Dr. Baby, Cody Orange. Uh, we will see you next time. In the words of my famous favorite rappers, deuces. Mm. <laughs>